In this video, I show you how to create a dramatic sky using Affinity Photo. If you enjoy this video or find it useful, then please like and subscribe. Here we have an image which is a great candidate for sky enhancement. Affinity Photo is the perfect software for the job. To get started, we first need to separate the sky from the landscape so that I can make adjustments to only the sky. I'll select the sky using the selection brush tool, which is here on the tool panel. As this is a pretty uncluttered sky, quite unobscured by objects, the selection tool should be fine for separating the sky from the landscape. If we had a more complex scene, then we would probably need more complex selection methods, which could be the subject for another video, I think. Right, let's start the selection. Drag the tool in the sky, maybe here, like so. Head towards the landscape. Once it starts to snap on the landscape, then move across like so. Then up and all the way across and bingo. And like magic, in a couple of seconds, we have the sky selected. The selection brush tool is really very good. Now we have the sky selected, which you can see here with all the marching ants, as we call them. I'd like to extract the sky and place it on its own layer. So here we'll have the background layer and the sky layer. Just right click on the background layer, like so. And from the menu that pops up, just select copy. Or use Control and C with the keyboard. Now we've performed the copy, the selected area of the background layer is in the computer's clipboard. To move the sky from the clipboard onto its own new layer, just right click on the background layer and select Paste. Or Control plus V on the keyboard. And there we go, we now have a brand new layer which contains our sky. Let's have a look if we just turn off the background layer with this little checkbox here. We can view just our sky layer. Excellent, now we don't need the selection anymore. We don't need the selection because we now have our sky in its own layer, above the background layer. So we'll just turn off that selection by hitting the deselect icon. And just for clarity, I'll rename the sky layer, click on the layer text, and then just type in the name. And once you're done, just hit enter on the keyboard. You don't have to rename your layers, but it's good practice because it's nice to be organized especially when you have many layers. Now we have the sky in its own layer. We are ready to perform the operations which will make it dramatic. Making sure our sky layer is selected, we are going to go into the tone mapping persona, where we will apply the first stage of the process. This takes a little while. Once we're in the tone mapping persona, First thing we do is to go to the Tone Compression slider and bring it down to zero. This is on by default, but we don't need Tone Compression. Next, we're going to activate the Magic slider, which is Local Contrast. In this case, we'll move it all the way to maximum. And as you can see, already the sky is extremely dramatic. The problem we have, though, is that the highlights are blown out. It's lit them up so much that we have no detail at all in the very brightest parts. They're now overexposed. The way I will fix this, sort it out, is by scrolling down in the controls here and selecting shadows and highlights. And then with the highlight slider, bring down the highlights, like so, until we can see we've recovered the detail in these brightest parts. That's looking very nice. OK, so let's go back to the top. Now we will add a little bit more drama by bringing down the blacks. And the way to do that is to just bring up the black point just a little. Not much. I don't want the shadows to be jet black. Now you can see we have a very dramatic sky indeed. Now we just hit apply and we're back into the photo persona. Great, so now we have a lovely dramatic sky using the tone mapping persona and local contrast. But we're not finished yet. We can enhance it even more by adding clarity. 
Now you can apply clarity to your images using the live filters here. If you select the live filters you can see clarity but instead I'm going to use the develop persona. The develop persona has its own clarity control here. This clarity slider is more pronounced, it's much better in my opinion. If we increase the clarity, like so, look at that, loads of detail. Let's do that again, and up the detail goes. We now have lots of lovely fine detail in our clouds. Again, we want to just check our highlights, they're a little clipped. So, select shadows and highlights, and bring down the highlights. It shouldn't require too much. There we go, I think that's okay. Once we're done, just hit develop. There we go, fantastic. Look at all of that lovely detail and drama in the sky. Now that's what I call sky enhancement. Let's take a look at the before and after for comparison. Turn off the sky layer here, before and after, and before and after. And if you think the effect is too much, just make sure your sky layer is selected, then go to the opacity and dial it down if you like. It's totally up to you, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to whack it up to max. And there we have a dramatic sky in Affinity Photo. Splendid! Okay, let's quickly have a go with this image. It's got a lovely big sky and Let's see how well the effect works. With the selection brush tool, select our sky area. All around the screen, making sure we go around the edges until it's filled. And then through the unselected sections like so. Press Ctrl C and then Ctrl V to copy and paste the sky into its own layer. For speed, I won't bother naming it. And then deselect. Get rid of the marching ants and then the tone mapping persona. And then wait a few seconds for it to do its calculations. Once we're in, right down with the tone compression, up with the local contrast. We have lots of blown out highlights, but this time I want to darken the whole sky, so I'm going to bring down the exposure, which should fix the highlights too. I think that's pretty good, very nice and hit apply, very nice. And then with our sky layer still selected, select the develop persona. And once in the develop persona, we bring up the clarity to the level that we would like. I think in this case, about there is nice. Fix the highlights with the exposure to also darken the sky. Another little tweak on the clarity till we get it right. Then I want to make the darker parts even darker to add even more drama. So up I go with the black point slider, bit by bit until I think it looks just so, and I think that's pretty good. Hit develop. The process has also enhanced dust spots, which I will get rid of using the inpainting tool. Just go over the dust spots with the inpainting tool one by one, until they're gone. Affinity Photo's inpainting tool is absolute magic. Just a couple more, looks like a couple of bugs or something, but I don't like them. And once we're finished, let's take a look. Before and after. Fantastic. It's a pretty noisy low light image, but the effect works, it's really enhanced the sun rays. Really nice. And that is creating a dramatic sky with Affinity Photo.